Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, please help us to use your word to live by daily so people can see the transformation taking place in us for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And it reads, And we all, with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes uh, from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Our subject for today is transformation. Uh, transformation. After the Lord reveals to us our true self through self-examination, uh, then he restores us by cleansing. And this week we shall learn about his transformation uh, through his word. Each of these three presents to us how God's word works as a mirror to minister to our needs. The Lord wants to change us so that we will grow into grace and not commit the same sins again and again. Most of us are not consistently aware of this ministry of God's word, but the fact that we need to die to sin and don't indicates that we have a huge need to grow in grace and not continue uh, to commit the same sins over and over. That's really a big need in our lives. And Paul asks the question, uh, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? In Romans chapter 6 verse uh, one through four, the, this is the Living Bible version I'm reading. It says, well then, shall we keep on sinning so that God can keep on showing us more and more kindness and forgiveness? Of course not. Should we keep on sinning when we don't have to? For sin's power over us was broken when we became Christians and were baptized to uh, become a part of Jesus Christ. Through his death, the power of your sins, sinful nature was shattered. Your old sins, uh, your old sin-loving nature was buried with him by baptism when he died. And when God the Father, with glorious power, brought him back to life again, you were given his wonderful new life to enjoy. Now, everywhere that I used you or your, you can change it to our or us uh, because we are in, that Paul is speaking expressly to us uh, now, not just to the early Christian. Too many Christians confess their sins and claim forgiveness but never grow spiritually to conquer self and sin. You must conquer self and sin. And you'll have to excuse me because uh, I, as I catch my breath, because that last statement kind of knocked the wind out of me. Uh, let's continue. Second Corinthians chapter three is a discussion of the contrast between the old covenant ministry of the law and the new covenant ministry of grace. The law is external, written on tables of stone, but salvation means that God's word is written on the heart. The old covenant ministry condemns and kills, but the new covenant ministry brings forgiveness and life. The glory of the law gradually disappeared, but the glory of God's grace becomes brighter 
and brighter. The law is temporary, but the new covenant of grace is eternal, everlasting. Paul's illustration of this truth is Moses' uh, and his veil. And when Moses came down from the mountain where he met God, his face was shining in Exodus chapter 34, verse 29 through 35. He did not want the Jews to see his glory fading away, so he put on a veil to hide it. And when he returned to the mount, he took off the veil. When Jesus died, he rent the veil in the temple and removed the veil between mankind and God. The Old Testament prophets wore veils to hide the fading of the glory. The New Testament believers has an unveiled face and the glory keeps getting greater and greater. You could explain 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 in this way. When the child of God looks into the word of God as the glass or the mirror, he sees the son of God and he is transformed by the spirit of God to share in the glory of God. The word changed in the Greek uh, gives us our English word metamorphosis a change on the outside that comes from the inside. Our former pastor, uh, the late Reverend Ariel Leak Sr., called it an inside-out job. When an ugly worm turns into a beautiful butterfly, that's a metamorphosis. When a believer spends time looking into the Word and seeing Christ, he's transformed. And the glory on the inside is revealed on the outside. It is this word transformed that is translated or tr to, into transfigured in Matthew chapter 17 and verse 2. The glory of Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration was not reflected. It was radiated from within him. And you'll find the same word used in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, that says, be ye transformed. Have that uh, glow, that, 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 uh, that, uh, that light that radiates from the inside to the outside. As we meditate on the word, the spirit uh, renews our mind and reveals the glory of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's a nature that we must recognize, even though we have the God-given ability to see ourselves as we are becoming and shall be, we do not become spiritual Christians overnight. It's a process. Just as we, just as uh, uh, we at the moment we are born physically, we start dying a little by little daily. There's a decaying process that takes place mostly unnoticeable. It's happening until the final decaying uh, takes place in the grave. Each day we are getting older and older, closer and closer to death physically. Now physical changes are mostly irreversible. But God has a way of changing our spiritually depraved, doomed, disobedient, and dying spiritual bodies back into its former state by transformation. It's a process, and, and the work of the Spirit of God through the mirror of the Word of God, transformation takes place. The important thing is that we hide nothing from God. The psalmist uh, prayed in this way in Psalms 139 verses uh, 23 and 24. He says, take off the veil, search me, O God, 
and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked ways in me and lead me to the way everlasting. If we say that we have no sins, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us according to 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. But Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 through 16, and this is the Living Bible version, says, But Jesus, the Son of God, is our great high priest, who has gone to heaven itself to help us. And therefore, let us stop, uh, never stop trusting him. Let us never stop trusting him. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses since he had the same temptations that we do, though he never once gave way to them and sinned. So let us come boldly to the very throne of God and stay there to receive his mercy and find grace to help us in our times of need. Because Jesus died and rose, we must put our trust in his work, in his salvific work on an old rugged cross one Friday on a hill called Calvary where he died and they buried him. Uh, that was the normal process then and the normal process now, either burying or cremation. Uh, they buried Jesus. But on the third day, his transforming word said that he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. And, and if we trust and never doubt, he will surely bring us out of our current state day by day until he returns again and changes us from what we are to what we shall be. And, 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 and one writer says, we don't know what we're going to be, but we know we're going to be like Jesus. Our first responsibility is to receive the word. Then we must practice the word. Otherwise, we are deceiving ourselves. We're lying to ourselves and believing our own lies. But now that leads us to the third responsibility, which is sharing the word. And we'll cover that next week in our in-person uh, gathering at the Mount. Uh, Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated, located at 1667 South Lauderdale Street, VIP seating only. And you are a very important person to us. So you are VIP want to see you in the place. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, our Lord God Almighty, thank you for your transforming word. Set our hearts to gaze into it so that we can see our changes that are coming uh, out from the inside. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. So with that, we will see you next week. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, take care. Uh, continue to gaze into the word of God. If you gaze into it instead of glancing into it, then it's basically impossible to forget what you see in the mirror of God's word. Take care. Bye-bye.